Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss process costing and cost accounting. However, rather than using the weighted average, the method that we learned about earlier, there's another method that we can use called FIFO. And we should all know what FIFO stands for. Stands for first in, first out. Let's go back and review what process costing is. In a process costing, each process, whatever that process is, is a separate production department. And for each process, we are going to apply direct labor, direct material, and overhead for that process. Now remember, for direct labor and overhead, we call this, we call this conversion cost. So conversion cost plus direct material. Then we're going to move, once it's finished, we'll move it to the next process until the goods are produced. Now, for the process of illustration, we're going to be using the same example. We're going to be producing finished goods called the best mixed nuts. That's the finished goods. Now, for these finished goods, we need material. We need nuts, we need chocolate, we need dried fruits. And for the sake of illustration, we have two separate processes or two separate departments. The roasting department, the first thing to do, we're going to take the direct material, mix it all together, and roast it. We're going to roast it, then we are going to blend. Blend it, then we're going to in the blending, we also package. We don't have a separate packaging. So in the blending, it just comes out in a package and we have the finished goods packaged. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at specific steps using numbers, using this system. Process costing using FIFO. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. The four steps in using FIFO are just like what we learned in FIFO and like what we learned in the weighted average are first determine the physical flow of units. How many units do we have? How many units are we accounted for? So we need to make sure we are accounting for all the units, whether it's beginning, start of this period or ending. Then we're going to compute something called the equivalent units of production. And this is where the weighted average and the FIFO will differ. Now, I hope you remember what's the equivalent units of production. Uh, the best example I can give you for the equivalent unit of production, if you have eight glasses of water that are half full, those are equivalent to four full units. So we're going to compute what are the equivalent unit, the completed equivalent unit. The completed equivalent unit are four, four full unit. Now, how do we compute the EUP, the equivalent units of production for FIFO? We're going to take the number of equivalent unit needed to complete beginning work and process. So in beginning work and process, you're going to be giving certain, certain numbers of unit. And those are completed as to a percentage. So if they told you they are completed, let's assume 80% as to conversion cost, it means we need 20%. And this is what we will add to our units, equivalent units of production. It's the units needed to complete. So we need 20% of equivalent units needed to complete work and process. Then we will add to, to that number, whole unit started, completed, and transferred out. So those are 100% completed as far as direct material, 100% completed as far as conversion cost. Why? Because they are transferred out. Then we add those. Then we will add the number of equivalent unit and ending inventory. Notice here, number of equivalent unit, not number needed to complete the equivalent unit, the number of equivalent unit. So we have 1,000 unit, 70% uh, completed to material, that's times 70%. We say we have 700 equivalent unit as far as the material, then that 1,000 unit is 80% completed to conversion, that's 800 unit as far as conversion. So we have to complete the equivalent units of production. Then what we will do after we after we complete the equivalent unit, we have to compute the cost 
per equivalent unit. How much cost per unit? Well, how do we compute the cost per unit? Very important to remember. Only we use the cost incurred this period. Only this period divided by EUP during the period. Only during the period. Now, the best way to illustrate this is to look at an example. Let's go ahead and look at an example. Well, from the month of May, what we did is we we have 30,000 units in beginning inventory in the roasting department. And we started, we added, we started to this roasting department, we started the process of 90,000 units. Well, what does that mean? We have 30,000 that were, they were not completed in the roasting and we started 90. We have in total 120,000 units to account for. What does that mean? It means they either all left, it means they were finished, or some of them were finished and transferred out and the remainders are an ending inventory. Unit transferred to finished goods during June is 100,000. Now, ending work in process is 20,000. Why? Because transferred out to finished goods of the 120, transferred out were 100,000. Now bear in mind of that of that 100,000, 90,000 started in the month of June, started in the month of June. We transferred 100,000, of which 90,000 were started in the month of June. So again, ending work in process is 20,000, 100,000 plus 20,000 equal the total units to accounted for, which would equal to 120,000 units to account for. That should make sense. If we transferred 100, we still have 20. If we started with 30 and added 90, we should have 120 to account for. Now, beginning work in process was 100% completed as far as material, 65% completed with, with respect to conversion cost. Again, the conversion cost is direct labor plus overhead. Now, ending work in process, 100% completed with respect to material. It seems the material is completed automatically, the first step, because once we add all the product, we have the material completed. As far as conversion cost, 25% completed with respect to conversion cost. How about the units transferred out? How, how are they completed? Well, they are 100% completed as far as material and conversion cost, and that's why they were transferred out, because they are completed. Now let's take a look at the cost that we incurred, that we experienced in this department. Beginning work in process was direct material 95,000, Conversion cost 110,000. Well, a total of 205. Direct material incurred in June 280,000. Direct labor in June 170. Factory overhead, which is 100%, 120% of direct labor cost 204. So those two together, we call them conversion cost 374,000. So the beginning work in process dollar amount is 205. Cost incurred this period, 654. Total cost to account for, 859. Because eventually we have to prepare a reconciliation schedule, make sure we accounted for all the cost. Now, first let's compute the physical flow of goods. Again, 30,000 unit beginning work in process plus unit start of this period equal to 120. When we, look at, when we look at the other end, at the end of the period, unit completed and transfer out 100. Unit work in process 20, well, we accounted for everything. So we know what happened to the 120 unit that we started with and we started this period. Now, as far as the completion, beginning work in process was 65% completed and ending work in process was 25% completed. Let's complete the EUP, EUP numbers. Well, as far as direct material, for, from beginning work in process, remember direct material was 100% completed. Therefore, what do we account for for the beginning work in process? If, if it's 100%, how much of the 100% remain? Zero. That's why there is nothing. Conversion cost, we have beginning work in process, 30,000 unit. They are 65% completed. It means the remaining is 35% and 35% will give us 10,000 500. Now we have to complete uh, equivalent unit from unit started this period. Remember, this period we started 90,000 unit. 
and we have left 20,000. It means from this period, we completed and transferred out 70,000. Hold on a second, that's not true. We completed and transferred out 100. Yes, the other 30,000, that's the whole process of first in, first out, were coming from beginning work, work and process. That's why it's first and first out. So the assumption is we transferred those out first, then we transferred 70,000 of the units that we started this period, and what's left is 20,000. I hope this makes sense. And notice 100% material, 100% conversion, and that's why they were transferred out, because they, they were 100% completed. Then the equivalent units of ending inventory, direct material, 20,000 unit, and those are 100% completed, if, therefore 20, uh, 200,000. The conversion cost is completed 25%, right here, conversion cost 25%. So if we take 20,000, multiplied by 25% will give us 5,000. Now we add up our EUP under FIFO. So for direct material, we have 90,000 of EUP as far as direct material and for conversion cost, 85,500. Now we are ready to look at the numbers. So this is what we completed. We completed the schedule. This is what we're giving to us. And let me just go back and compute the cost per unit. Remember, we have 95,000 from beginning inventory, 110,000 from beginning inventory of conversion cost. Cost incurred this period, and this is what we really care about, 280 and 374 that are incurred this period. This is the total cost. Remember, the total cost, nothing more than, at, at this stage, nothing more than a reconciliation that we accounted for everything. But really what we are looking at is to compute the cost per unit are these two figures. Therefore, we'll take this figure, 280,000, and we'll divide it by the equivalent unit of production that we computed in step two, the 90,000. Therefore, as far as the material, it's $3.11. Same concept for conversion cost, 374,000, divided by 85,500. The cost per equivalent unit of production is $4.37. Now, obviously, you can add them both to figure out what is the total cost per unit, how much it costs us. So let me just perform the computation. $3.11 plus $4.37. So the cost per unit is 7.485. This is the cost per unit as far as both direct material and conversion cost. Now let's do a reconciliation schedule. A beginning raw material is 95,000 uh, and beginning uh, work in process. Uh, conversion cost, beginning work in process is 110. Together, they give us 205. Now, cost to complete units from beginning work in process. Remember, as far as the material, we have nothing left. So $3.11 times zero is zero. Then we're gonna take $4.37 times 10,500. This is how much we incurred this period for these remaining 35% of conversion cost, which we incur 45,927. We completed 70,000 units. We're gonna take the 70,000 unit, multiply it by $7.485, cent, which will give us 523,950, which is the equivalent per material, equivalent uh, cost as far as material and conversion cost. Then we have cost and ending inventory. We have 20,000 unit as far as direct material, 100% completed, times the $3.11. That's gonna give us 62,222. Conversion cost, 5,000 equivalent unit times the conversion cost per unit, $4.37, which will give us 21,870. Cost and ending process is 84,000. $90. Now we add up the beginning cost and ending inventory, cost to complete plus cost incurred this period plus ending inventory will give us 858967 and that number should reconcile with reconcile with 859, 859000 You might be saying the difference, the difference is due to uh, the rounding that we are doing here, but this is basically a reconciliation schedule. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, farhatlectures.com, where I have lectures, multiple choice, true-false, additional exercises, 
that's going to help you whether you are studying for your CPA exam or you are taking an accounting course, managerial accounting, cost accounting, CMA exam, any professional certification. Invest in yourself. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.